I watch a lot of gameplays on YouTube for two reasons. One is to get inspired and second because I can't afford to buy these games. And this process can be boring and take a lot of time. I spent the last night watching gameplays on YouTube, but none of them seemed to give me any ideas. That's until I stumbled on this video. It was a Battlefield 3 mission gameplay and my mind, <clears throat> my mind was blown away. It was more than just a game. It was more like a movie. No, it was more than that. It was a roller coaster of emotions. It was a beautiful piece of art. Just kidding. It was a normal gameplay. I just wanted to add action and drama to the intro. But with that being said, I really liked the scene and I wanted to recreate it in Photoshop. I started by cutting this fighter jet and I used the old classic pen tool to do it. And of course that's with the help of the lasso tool because with the pen tool only I can't reach some areas so I used the lasso tool to fix some areas that I couldn't reach with the pen tool. After cutting the jet I used the pen tool to select the pilot's area which is the uh, glass one right here and I separated from the original layer. And that's by making a selection and then with the last tool I right clicked and I chose layer via cut. Then I used the blend if to remove the highlights from that area and that's to make the glass transparent. After that I convert that layer to smart object and then I rasterize it. Every time you cut a layer using the blend if technique make sure to leave a layer as a backup beneath it. Then I added a mask to the original layer and I made this black and I painted white on the pilots and the control panel. There was nothing that I can take as a reference and measure the perspective so what I did is I added a square shape and I start to change the perspective of it till it's matching the perspective of the fighter jet. And as you can see I start to change the perspective trying over and over. I went with that shape because it made more sense and it's matching with the perspective of the fighter jet. And then I went to filter and I selected the vanishing point. And just a quick note before I continue, I have no knowledge in this vanishing point stuff. This is the first time I use it. So everything you are going to see right now is going to be random and I got lucky with it. And so what I did is I took that point and I selected the square shape that I made and I made the perspective of the ground or the floor that the fighter jet is supposed to be landing on. And when I got the shape that I wanted, I just clicked OK. And the reason why I chose to work with the vanishing point is because the next stock image, which is this one, this is a top view of an air fighter carrier. And the first thing I did is I selected that base and with the content aware fill, I removed it. And then I cut that whole shape with the blend if. And remember to leave a backup layer beneath it. Then I used the backup layer to paint some details back in the middle of the shape. Then back to the documents, I added a new empty layer. And then I went to filter, vanishing point to use my floor uh, perspective that I made. Then I clicked the control V to paste that aircraft carrier. And as you can see, the process of me matching the aircraft carrier with the vanishing point perspective that I made wasn't easy. So what I did is I clicked on control T, which is the free transformation tool. And randomly, I just start to rotate the shape, increasing the size of it, decreasing the size, flipping it over and over till I get a result that was acceptable in my case. Then I got this stormy overcast sky stock image and I added to my artwork. Then I changed the perspective of it and I decreased the size. From this image I wanted to take the smoke and to do that I added levels by clicking Control L and I added contrast between the smoke and the background behind it. After that, I used the blend if to take the dark areas and I made the transition smooth. Then I converted to smart objects and I rasterized the layer. 
I want you to remember this step because it's going to be the same step that I'm going to use every time I cut smoke, clouds or anything similar. After that, I pasted the smoke on the image. I made it lighter by using the Ctrl U, which is hue and saturation. Then to match the color, I used the uh, selective color adjustment layer. I added cyan and blue. Make sure the selective color adjustment layer is set to uh, color. And with the hue and saturation, I made it darker. I also added hue and saturation that is set to color blending mode and I increased the lightness to decrease the color of the cyan and blue. And by the way, so this narration is not going to be uh, repetitive. This is the same steps that I used to match the color of all the objects. So I used the hue and saturation set to color blender mode and I increased the lightness to decrease the uh, saturation on the objects. Then I added a selective color adjustment layer set to color blender mode to add the blue and the cyan. As you can see, I did the same with the uh, jet and the floor. And with a levels adjustment layer, I added contrast to the jet. And with a hue and saturation, I added lightness. This is for the fade. And with a hue and saturation adjustment layer set to color blender mode, I added lightness. With a new empty layer set to multiply blender mode and a 50% gray color, I started to paint beneath the jet. This process is like dodge and burn. I just wanted to add more depth to the jet. I sampled a color from the sky and start to paint on the top areas of the jet just to match it with the uh, background. So it looks like the background color is getting into the jet. Next step is to add the rain effect. And to do that, I added an empty layer and filled it with black. Then I went to filter, pixelate, mesotint, and I added the coarse dots. Click OK and then go to Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur. Add like 2 pixels of blur and then with a levels, add a lot of contrast. Then click 2 times on the layer and use the Blend If to separate the white dots from the black background. Then with a hue and saturation, add lightness to it so you get rid of that black strokes. Next step is go to Blur Gallery and then choose the Path Blur. And from here you can choose the direction of the rain. After that, select the square selecting tool and then select an area from that rain. Then click on Ctrl G to duplicate it on a new layer. Then increase the scale of it. And shout out to the PTC channel because I got this idea from them. And when you duplicate it, go to the filter, blur and click on lens blur. Add just a bit of blur to the increased uh, new layer. Then repeat the same steps again, select an area from the rain and increase it even more and then add more lens blur to it. Then merge all the layers of the rain that you created. With the hue and saturation make it dark and with a selective color add the cyan and the blue to the rain. Here I added more smoke using the same steps that I did before. And because it's raining in the image, I decided to make the jet wet from the top and to do that what I did is I duplicated the layer of the jet and I added contrast to it using the levels. Then I turned it to black and white by clicking on Shift Control U. After that, I clicked two times on that layer. And with the blend if, I removed the dark areas from that selection. Then I changed the blending mode of that layer to screen. I added lighting using the blend if technique again and made it darker and added the uh, bluish color to it using the selective color. Then I got this cloud image and put it to the top to cover some of the lighting. I made the rain brighter and that's by duplicating the rain layer and changing the blending mode to screen or linear light. I opened the camera raw filter and what I tried to do here is I tried to match the color grading of my image to the color grading in the video that I watched of the game. And that's by using the color wheels that you are seeing on the color gradient tab. And I added just a bit of contrast clarity and sharpness and I tweaked the colors on the collection menu and I added just a bit of grain to add noise to the image and just a bit of vintage. So of course this is going to be the color grading of the final image and as you can see the image is not finished yet. So what I did is I saved these settings as a preset and that's by clicking on the three dots and then click on save settings. Then click on check all and then click on save and save it in your computer. Then I used the texture of this wood, then I pasted it on the jet to add the look like there is rust on that jet. 
And in case you are wondering why I chose the wood texture to do that is because I did not know it was a wood at the first. I just realized that while I'm editing this video. But it looked good and this is the most important thing in the artwork. Then I added this texture to the ground just to make it look like it's wet. And that's by adding the texture and then using the blend if I took the dark areas and I changed the blending mode to overlay. And then I got this stock image of this navy ship and I used the blend if to cut it. And then I did the same steps again. I fixed the values. I added the color using the selective color. I added levels to add contrast to it. And with the hue and saturation, I added lightness to add the fade. And then another hue and saturation adjustment layer to decrease the saturation. Then I used this ship image to take the lights. Basically what I did is I copied the lights. I pasted them. I pasted them on the artwork and I changed the blending mode to screen and I added levels to add the contrast to them. And with the hue and saturation adjustment layer, I changed the hue to the left side to add the red color to them. And then I went to the Neostock website to grab me some smoke images. And as you can see on the screen, they got some of the best stock images in the game. I downloaded two smoke images and I used one beneath the jet and the other to fill the floor. Then I got this fence stock image. I pasted it on the artwork and I duplicated it a few times. And then I used it as a fence for the aircraft carrier. Then I went to the same process of fixing the values and matching the color by using levels, hue and saturation, and selective color. Then I got these cones stock images, and then I went to the same steps to match the color and the lighting. Just a note before I continue, I usually don't use the lens flare and the overlays stock images because I'm that type of a person that likes to create everything by himself using just the software. So I wanted to test how my images would look like if I used the overlays. And let me just tell you that I got great results. So basically what I do is I took that overlay stock images and I paste them on the artwork. I changed the blended mode to screen and I use levels to add contrast. So this was the lens flare and this was like some rain sparkles or something like that. And then I used the lens flare on the ship lights. Then I went and cut this other jet to add it to the left side of the artwork because it felt empty. And of course I fixed the values, the colors and the lights just like I did with the other jet. And to make the shadow what I did is I duplicated the layer of the jet. I filled this with black. And with a control T and then I took the anchor point on the bottom and I made it tight. Then I went to filter, blur gallery and iris blur. I make the point on the middle and I add blur on the right side. And then with the eraser I erase it from some places. Then I added light into it. And the color using the color balance. Just add blue and cyan. Then I got this stock image of that man that's holding the signal and to cut it I used the select object tool and because it's not perfect yet I had to use the lasso tool and fix some areas that wasn't selected. With a camera raw filter I decreased the highlights and I increased the shadows and I increased the clarity to add some depth to that stock image. Then I pasted it on the artwork. I placed it on the middle. And I used the rule of third to place that man right there. And of course, to match it with the rest of the background, I used the selective color to add the colors. I used levels to add the contrast. And two hue and saturation layers, one to add the fade and the other is to decrease the saturation. Then with an empty layer set to multiply blending mode, I painted 50% gray on the areas that I wanted to be dark. And to add the light from the top, I used the same technique I used for the first jet. Then I added the shadows by duplicating the layer and fill it with black using the hue and saturation. Then with an iris blur I made the shadow sharp in his leg and the further it gets the more it will be blurred. Then I added the hue and saturation to add the light and then the selective color to add the blue and the cyan to the shadow.
I added a mask to that shadows layer and with a gradient transparent black color I dragged from the bottom to the top and I decreased the opacity of it. To add the light of the jet fire I added hue and saturation adjustment layer and I checked color and I added the red color by selecting it from the hue and increased the saturation. Then I turned the mask to black and with a white color I start to paint on his left side in his helmet and his left arm and his right arm and the vest. Because the lighting felt like it was flat, I clicked two times on that layer and I used the blend if to make it more accurate, then clicked OK and then I clicked on the mask, then I went to camera raw filter and I added the grain on the camera raw filter. The reason why I added the grain on the camera raw filter is because I wanted to get rid of that flat shapes or the flat edges on the mask and when we add the grain to it, it looks more realistic. And to make that red light brighter, what I did is I duplicate the layer of it and I changed the blending mode to color dodge. Then I used that texture of the raindrops on the window on his vest to make it look like it is wet from the rain. I placed it, I used the blend if to cut the uh, dark areas and then I turned the blending mode to screen and I start to duplicate it on his vest and his clothes and then I went to fix the values of it and the colors exactly like how I did it with the rain layer at the top. To add the effect of the fire engine First I went to the filter gallery and I added the ripple effect. But it did not work good because as you can see, every time I try to paint it, it changes the places of some areas. To fix that, I duplicated the layer on new document and I added an empty layer and filled it and filled it with 50% gray. Then I added texture to it by selecting the texture effect from the filter gallery. Then I increased the size of it and then I added blur to it. Then I saved it as a PSD file on my computer. Then I went back to the final image and went back to the filter gallery and I chose the glass effect. And then I clicked on that three lines and I selected the load texture. Then I selected the BSD file that I created. That gave me a better result. All I had to do is decrease the sensitivity of that effect and then I clicked OK. Then I added a black mask to it and I start to paint with the white on the jet engine areas. And as you can see, it's not moving the objects from their places, which means it works perfectly than the other effect. And for the final effect, I added the camera raw filter and from that three lines, I went there and I clicked on load settings and I loaded the settings that I created at the beginning. And as you can see, this is the final result that I got.